Hey guys, this is Tara with Teaching on Lemon Lane, and this is just a quick product walkthrough of the Bracket Challenge. So let's go ahead and get started. I've included a list here of kind of some ideas to give you some inspiration about how you can use this product in your classroom. And I hope you don't feel limited to this list because I truly tried to make an activity or product that could work with anything. Um, some of the ideas that you can use this with is picture books and Please remember that you can use picture books in the upper grades. They are a great way to integrate different subjects. So consider using picture books. Um, you could determine your next class read aloud. You could do this at the beginning of the school year even and determine the first class read aloud. Um, this works great for novels. You can simply just read the blurb on the back of the book or do the first chapter and have students determine who the winner is based on which book they would like to hear more of until you've determined the first book. This is a great way to introduce students to a lot of different books and there are books that they can read independently. Um, they kind of have a list that they can refer back to once you're done with the challenge. Um, you can use this with the women's history bundle that I've included um, in the March bundle. This is a great activity to kind of introduce students to um, different women and you could decide the way that I would introduce this is who should be included on the next $25 bill or again you can use this with any biography. You could uh, use the prompt um, who should be on the cover of the next you know Time magazine or just simply who was the most impactful and have students go through and kind of put different people in the matchup madness. Um, mammals or animals, if you teach animal adaptations, this is a really cool way for students to kind of dig into the specifics of animals. So you could use it with animals, um, poetry. I've seen people use this with poetry. Um, you could have students determine, you know, the best use of figurative language or the most impactful poem. Uh, musicals, comparing careers, colleges, uh, different places. You can even use this as a multiplication master, have students kind of go head to head at the end of the year after they've practiced their times test <clears throat> and determine kind of who is the multiplication master. So a lot of fun ideas here. I've also included a letter to home. If you're having students kind of using the student choice route, students could put their top three choices for what they would want their selection to be. Um, and you notice right here, I always add this disclaimer, like maybe you've put these top three choices in and you still may not get one of your top three choices, depending on how popular different choices are. So they may need to come up with um, different alternatives as well. You'll also notice I've included this list of suggestions in case there are maybe, you know, those three to five really popular choices that everyone want or wants. This is a great way to kind of show your students your list of suggestions or recommendations. You can duplicate this page if you need more of them. You would simply just come over here to this side, right click, and then you would click duplicate side. And then you would have students kind of sign up to say or reserve that slot that they would like to look more into this. And then they could include that on their selection. So that's a great way to diversify their choices. If you are looking for um, the print versions of this and tr you're having trouble printing from the Google slide, I highly suggest you click here and this will link you to the PDF version of all of these printables. So it'll make it a lot easier to kind of interact with and print. If you do want to use the printable versions, but you still want to edit the text, notice you can completely change this to your class um, depending on what you are using as a matchup. If you want to name it, you know, if it were me, I could do Mrs. Doxy's Matchup Madness and I could type that in there. Um, if you end up editing the text, but you still want to use it as a printable, you would simply print from your Google Slides or you would turn it into a PDF um, document from Google Slides and then print. So two options that you can do this if you want to edit and then print instead of using the PDF that's already included, you would click on the slides and you would come up here and go file. And then you can simply print. When you hit print, it's going to come up with a preview of all of the slides so you could go through and kind of edit the ones that you need. Another option is to download the Google Slides as a PDF. So another option would come up here to download and then you would click PDF and then you're going to open the PDF and you can again print from the slides that you need. You can go through and delete different ones. Um, if you're not planning on editing what I've already given you, I would suggest just sticking to this option here. But if you want to go through and make some edits 
like this note that I've included here that you can change the name of the challenge. You can actually edit the instructions. You could even change the question prompt that I have here where students are rating themselves. So just a great way to do kind of an exit ticket or rate their comprehension. So you can edit those. So if you do change, plan on editing those, you're going to either need to print it, file, print and then set that up or download it as a PDF and then print from there. So those are two great options. Um, you'll notice here with the printables, I've included two sizes. The sizes are simply for aesthetics. So it, when students, you would, let's say we're doing a biography. So I choose the picture frame template. Students would draw the picture of the person that they are doing. They're going to write their name. So let's say that I'm a student and I'm doing Abraham Lincoln. Maybe we're doing the most, um, the favorite president. So I'm Abraham Lincoln is my selection. I go in here. I would draw a picture of Abraham Lincoln in my best handwriting. I would write his name right here. And now you've got two sizes to pick from. And again, this frame, see this dotted line here, they're going to be cutting this out and that's what they're going to be displaying on your bracket. So again, this is all aesthetics. If you're going to have a really big bracket, I would use the really big frame. If you're going to use maybe the smaller um, bracket option that I've included as a printable, maybe the smaller frame is a good option. Um, let me show you where this label is going to be used as well. So each template has two sizes, the large and the small. And with each one of those, it's really just dependent on which one you want to have displayed on your bracket in your classroom if you're doing a printable. So let me kind of show you the options there. So you'll notice here's my printable bulletin bracket options. So you can pick from either the 32 slot, which is a good for a class where everyone has kind of their one choice and then we narrow down from there. Or you could even use the 16 slot one and have students work in groups or partners to kind of come up with that. So if we're using the 32 slot, you've got two, actually quite a few options, um, but you'll notice this one right here, this is going, this bracket when you print it will be five pages tall and two or five pages wide and two pages tall. And so you, to access that, you simply click there and it's going to automatically link you to the PDF printouts of it. Now, when you print it out, it'll look like this. You'll have these corner pages that will help you line everything up. And on the larger ones, you'll also have a letter and a number in the corner to show you how that poster lines up. So again, if you are using the five by two, this is only 10 pages. Um, I would probably use the smaller option on the templates. If you're using the five by five, now notice this is five pages wide, five pages tall. This is gonna give you a bigger bracket. I would use the larger frame one. Um, let me show you how I use the label on my um, bulletin board mockups. So let me zoom in so you can get a better idea. So you'll notice here, this is where students would include the label. So this, because there's 16 on each side, your space to put those pictures was going to be really, really cramped. So I suggest using their label in that first um, seed of the bracket. And then as they move on, then you can post the pictures that they've done. Now this is one where students have done the digital template, which allows them to insert an actual digital photo or representation of their selection and then print it and then you would use it on the bulletin board. Um, so that's really cool. Let's go ahead and dive into that a little bit more. But again, that's what those labels are included for. So you can have a, a better space saving option there. So let's go back to our printable templates. So again, every one of them have a big one and a small. So the frames are great for say biographies. So you've got a big and a small option there. You can go in and edit the text if you need to. Students will then cut out both the frame and the label, and those two pieces are going to be used on the bulletin board. And I have in the instructions to write their name on the back so we know whose is whose. You have a circle frame. This is a great kind of one size fit all subject option. A rectangle frame, another one size fit all option when it comes to the subjects. Um, this taller book template is great for novels. And then I also have the smaller option. And then you have your wider book option, which is a great option for say your picture books. So those are the different templates that I've included. Let's go ahead and look at the digital versions that students can do. Um, there will be a video tutorial of me explaining this to the students. So let's just check this out as a teacher. So again, I have both frames. Students are essentially going to insert their picture, 
type here, and then they will print from their Google Slides. So if I was a assigning this to a student in um, Google Classroom, I would select the slide that I wanted. I would then come up here to File, and I'm going to make a copy, and I'm going to make a copy of just the slides that I've selected. If there's multiple slides that you want students to have access to in Google Classroom, make sure you select more than one. So I would just hold down the button as I select the ones that I want. So I have two selected, File, make a copy just of the selected slides, and then you're gonna use that slideshow's URL um, to assign to your students digitally, okay? So let's go ahead and look at this. Notice I've got this teacher note here. Don't forget to delete this or have students delete it when they use it. It's just telling you that you can edit this to your challenge. So you would delete this note, and then we've got my instructions over here that's gonna walk your students through. So again, let's say that I'm doing biographies. I'm gonna come up to, we'll just use it on the smaller one since I've already deleted it. Um, you'll notice I've got my instructions here as to how to insert an image. And then the reflection side is over here. You can edit the reflection questions or what you want students to be kind of talking about or exploring. Um, they can also show their confidence level or whatever it is that you want them to rate on the scale. But let me show you really quickly how to insert an actual picture. Now, this is a lot of fun. So what you're going to do is students are going to click on the picture placeholder. So any play, anywhere you see this blue pattern, come up here to replace image. Then they're simply going to search the web. And again, I'm doing Abraham Lincoln. I search it. There it is. I click on my favorite photo. I double click. And it's automatically going to insert his picture into that frame. Um, I probably should have... Oh, Okay, let me show you that. I thought that it was already cut off. So in order to, if they need to edit it, let's see how the top of his head's being cut off. I would simply double click. This brings me to the crop view. And then I'm going to just single click and drag. And I'm going to place it to where it's no longer cut off. So if students are going to print this digital version, so they would come here, they would type their choice. And then we come up here again and they would print it. And again, remember, they're going to be editing this in their student version. So let's just go through the different digital templates that are included. Again, you've got the larger and the small option. And again, students will be printing these, cutting these out, and then you will use those in your uh, printable bulletin board. So we've got the circle, the rectangle, the book that's great for novels or chapter books, and the wider book that's great for your um, picture books. Next, let's talk extension ideas. Um, the bracket challenge lends itself extremely well to persuasive writing, opinion writing, argumentative writing. Um, it's also a fun way to do an oral report if you're looking to kind of tie in that type of writing, but students need a change up uh, if you've been writing a lot of essays. Um, turning this into an oral report is a really fun way to do this. I also suggest um, you could even have students use Flipgrid, which is essentially this uh, classroom, digital classroom, and it'll post all of the students' videos. So students can go through, and that's how students can compete against one another, is that you would show the recording of their oral report. So I've included a link to Flipgrid if that's something that you want to explore. Um, I've also included a graphic organizer. This text is editable. Um, I've done a really light text box so student know, students know where to double click and they can just start writing. You can use this either as a printable or a digital option. Um, same here, once you start typing, it'll actually line up with the lines that I've included. And if you're doing it as the oral report, students can kind of mark through. These are the requirements that I would use for my oral report. If you'd like to change that text to fit it to your classroom, you are welcome to do so. Again, this can be used as printable or digital. You've got a draft page, the final draft page. Um, additional extension idea, which makes it a really fun interactive activity for the entire school is to create a Padlet. Now a Padlet is kind of like a digital bulletin board and I've included a template here. Just make sure that you make a copy of it before you begin interacting with it and it'll it'll prompt you to do that. So you would click here and essentially you would see this um, display where students can insert a picture, they give the title, and then they give a brief summary about their selection. And when you create a Padlet, it'll give you this all of the selections there and people can 
like it, kind of give it a thumbs up, or just become familiar with the choices. So you can actually include a QR code to the Padlet and include that on your bulletin board. So anyone in the school, you can invite classes to come and scan the QR code and learn about the different selections. And you can also even invite them to vote digitally by including a QR code to these digital voting ballots. Now these digital voting ballots are simply just Google Forms. Students will go in, they give their choices. You just simply have to type in what the choices are for each one. Um, but again, this will make a copy of the forms that I already have, making it really easy for your class or even different classes or the school to have a say in this matchup madness. So again, you would include a QR code to the Padlet to inform everyone about what the choices are. And then you would include a QR code to the link of your, um, the voting forms. So lots of fun options there. You can simply just Google a QR code converter and you'll get a lot of great free options for creating a QR code just based off a link. So you would just type that in, print, and then you're ready to go. Um, Let's go back now. We're going to circle back again. So these are the fun kind of extension ideas. Another fun extension idea is to have students fill out a bracket before the matchup madness begins. I've included a printable version here. I would suggest that you go through and type in the selections or share this with your class and have them go and type in their selection here. The way that I would assign this is I would have students find their class number. And I give students a class number based on where their name shows up alphabetically. So student one would come here, they'd type it in, and then you could come over here and you would click on this slide and go file make a copy and again or you can just include this in that um, first copy that you make that are digital copies that the students are going to have access to and assign that through google classroom so they can fill out a challenge digitally this is the 32 seed option you also have the 16 seed option that they can do digitally they would simply just double type or double click and type or you have the printable option as well and this printable is included in those PDFs so again student would find their number you can write them all in together and then they would predict their winner um, the text here is editable or you can keep it how I've got it so 32 seed printable option 16 seed um, or printable option as well and then now we come into the voting so you have two options you can either have students vote digitally and use the google forms that i've used here um, i make a note consider not showing the results of the poll to your students even though this is all opinion based everyone wants to win and everyone wants to be selected so i would be sensitive to the votes making sure that that stays um only you see those numbers unless maybe during the final two then you could reveal it because most likely once you get to the final two everyone's going to be invested in different you know choices and feel very strongly about it so it might be fun to see once you get to the final two or even the final four what the results are but in those first starting stages i would keep that um i would just keep the results to yourself there so i've linked copies to my Google Forms, notice that the, the words aren't linked. So if you click on the words and it's not working, just click over here on the button and then you'll get the link here. So it, once you click on the button, the link will pop up. If you're type, clicking on the words and it's not working, it's simply because the words aren't linked. So just click on the button. You can also, so you can vote digitally and just have that very automatic or you can vote using the printables. So you can go in and type in who will be matched up and then just have students vote that way just with a check or they can even use this as a digital form as well. I also have students write their signature up here. This is to show that they are showing their true vote, that it is not based on friendships or that any type of bias that way. And I actually include a note on that in those Google Forms as well. So you've got the big dance, you've got the sweet 16, the elite eight. And you'll notice as each voting form goes on, um, they have to explain more or defend their vote why they picked one over the other. And then, of course, the championship ballot here. So the downside with the printable options is obviously that you are going to have to be counting those. So maybe you'll choose to do a mix. Maybe you do a bit of the Google Form uh, vote where it's just automatically counted. 
And then when you get down to the bottom, if you want more of a them to defend kind of their choice, then maybe you use the printable option that way. Totally up to you, totally flexible to your classroom. Um, don't forget about these digital brackets. So maybe you don't want to print off the entire bracket and assemble everything, but you still want to display the results. Um, this bracket, digital bracket display is great for that. So essentially what you're going to do, you would come in, students could type their choices, their selections, or you could type their selections. And then as each person moves on, you would say between the seeds one and three, you would insert a picture of the winner here. So again, we do this, we follow these steps. So we click on the picture placeholder, replace image, and then you can search the web or you can simply upload a picture from your computer. So let's say that I was doing novels and the book Wonder, I even add novel, doesn't come up, right? And usually when that happens, you're only getting public domain images in this search. So let's say you're using novels and your picture doesn't come up. What you're going to need to do instead is students would go to the website or do a Google search that doesn't use one within the Google Slides, find the picture of the cover, save it to their device, and then they would go replace image, upload from computer, and then they would upload the image that way to get the actual picture there. So we have a 32 seed digital bracket that you can display to your class. And you also have the 16 seed, seed um, digital bracket that you can use. So that's a really fun way to display it. And you don't have to print off everything and do all of the work um, that it takes to put together an interactive display like that. So printable bulletin. So coming back to this, again, remember you've got these corners to help line things up. You'll have a small letter in the corner to help you know the where that paper goes um, as far as columns and rows. You got a lot of 32 slot brackets to pick from. A black and white that's five by two, black and white that's five by five. This one only has the white. This is another five by two, five by five. This one has the black and the basketball lines in there, five by two, five by five. And then you have one or two 16 slot brackets that you can choose from. So here's your five by two display or the six or the five by five display. And to access those PDFs that you will simply just print and assemble, all you do is just click on the button. It'll automatically link you to it. Now, there's two approaches that you can take from this. There's the student led one that we've been talking about this entire time where students make the selection and it's more um, kind of student led. You can also just do a teacher led bracket where you've decided all of everything that you're going to be going through or what the selections are. If you're doing it that way as an option, you're clearly not going to need that student reflection sheet. So I've included these picture placeholders for you to just automatically insert those pictures in. You also have these that are a bit more printer friendly if you want to go with the smaller version. So you would decide what's being selected. You would insert the pictures there, same way. Click on the picture placeholder, replace image, and then you're either going to use the search the web or the upload from the computer. Last thing to cover is the editable bulletin board kit. Now remember, I've included the printable option of the PDFs where you can just click on it and print from there. But if you want to use the editable capability, you're gonna need to edit it on Google Slides first. And then from there, you can turn it into the PDF like we've talked about, or simply just print from Google Slides. I've included two bulletin board themes, um, just so you can kind of customize it to whatever you are using in your classroom. Now, why you might want to use the editable option. I put March on the banner, and that is also just ready to print. But let's say you're using this at the beginning of the school year. You don't want March. So you could actually go down to the banner, double click, and you could change those letters to whatever you would like them to say. If you need more pennant flags, you would simply just right click, duplicate, and then type it in exactly however you need it. So let's go ahead and look at the first theme that is included. The first theme is kind of more if you're doing a reading one or just a general kind of classroom theme, um, I've included this kit. Now you'll notice over here we have kind of this book printout. If you wanted to use this, and notice it's a lot bigger than just a one single page that I've included right here. If you want the multi-page poster, which it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages total, you simply click there and it'll give you the printout of it. You can also do a larger trophy. This one's four um, pages are included to make the trophy. 
Again, you would just click there and you'll get the PDF of it. Or you can use the single page um, embellishments. Let me make this fit. Obviously, you're going to need more than three of the borders. So to make enough borders, you could simply just print that many pages or you can duplicate the pages. So right click and duplicate. I would suggest just printing as many pages of that single page that you need. Um, we've talked about if you need to edit the banner to whatever you would like it to be, simply add another pennant if you need it. This text is also editable, so you can change that how you would like it. I've used these circles. It's just a fun who will win, but you can go in and edit that text as well. Um, again, you can customize this to your classroom and then print it there. These are the little markers that I use to show how many are left after each, uh, uh, sorry, selection seed. And this one, you've got two options for the number one. So if you want to put a little bit more emphasis on the winner, you could use the larger number one there. So that's more of kind of your classroom general reading theme. I've also included this basketball themed kit. Um, so a different border. Again, you can mix and match these. A larger basketball hoop, you would simply just click there to uh, access that printable. Or you can simply just use the smaller embellishments. The flaming basketball, again, I think this is one, two, three, four, about eight pages, or is it just four? Probably just four pages. Click there, print it out and assemble, or you've got the smaller one. Again, the trophy, and then a second option for the pennant banner. And remember, you can mix and match these themes as much as you would like. Um, if you need more of these, you simply double click and you can edit the text there. We've got the basketballs you can type on again, and then lastly, these. That is everything. If you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. If you're doing this activity and you find that you need more, please reach out to me at teachingonlemonlane at gmail.com. I love to hear from you and I love to make sure that you have everything that you need to implement an awesome activity. I hope you and your class love this. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.